child who is yet in its mother's womb. You might want to take notes on these. Write them down. Everybody get your Bible out. Someone beside you does not have a Bible. Uh, be sure and show them. There is no way in the world that we can take time to go into all aspects of it this morning. We would be here all day long. I've got quotes. I've got documents. I've got a testimony of a 13-year-old girl named Kathy Walker of Torrance, California. She is six and a half months pregnant, overcome by the prospect of becoming a mother. Her family doctor advised her to have an abortion, six and a half months pregnant, 13 years old. He told me and my parents that this blob of tissue could be removed as easily as a wart. You know why? Because the doctor can make more money by aborting it than he could by delivering it. You say, are you accusing some people of just doing things for money? Yes, yes absolutely, amen, I am. That's a proven fact. Money is the root of all evil, the love of it. The love of money will ruin your life. It will ruin you, brother. And if you let money, the love of it, get a hold of you, just it'll mess up your morals, it'll mess up your home, it'll mess up your walk with God, it'll destroy you. When the book said the love of money is the root of all evil, those were not wasted words. God meant what He said. Now, the doctor told her, uh, the physician, physician referred her to City's Planned Parenthood Clinic. Seeing no other alternative, she guaranteed to the li instead of a life of loneliness, wretchedness, and poverty, the 13-year-old girl chose to have an abortion. You know why? She didn't have any choice. They pressured her into a corner where she didn't realize there'd be some Christian parents love to adopt that child. And, let it, and there's always the argument of if, what if a girl's raped and that kind of thing. It's always wrong to punish a child for the sin of its daddy. Now, you don't forget that. You do not punish the child for the sin of its daddy. If the pregnancy was unwanted, there stands in line hundreds of Christian families wanting to adopt little boys and little girls. They're standing in line. Waiting to do it. That's okay, Roy. Uh, they standing in line waiting to do it, okay? So you listen to what I'm saying this morning. The next day they plan to have her abortion. The details of what transpired burned into her mind. Quote, a 13-year-old girl. I asked the doctor what he was going to do. He said, all I'm going to do is take out a little fluid and put in a little fluid. That's all. The fluid he takes out is... You got the microphone on here? The fluid he takes out is the water that surrounds the baby. The baby, when it's in the mother's womb, is surrounded by water. That's the fluid he takes out. The fluid he puts in is salt that burns the eyes and it goes into the nostrils and just literally, how would you like somebody to stick you down in a solid underwater tank of salt water? In your eyes, up your nose. Of course, they don't say that. According to the hospital's records, Walker's abdomen was prepped with betadine and draped for the infusion of saline, a solution of salt. After the administration of a local anesthetic, the 18-gauge needle was inserted to the 13-year-old's cavity of 95 cc's of clear amniotic fluid was drawn out. 190 cc of 20% saline, that salt, was inserted. What came next, the doctor had not prepared her or forewarned her. The large needle that pierced the 13-year-old girl's abdomen burst her bubble of illusion about what was he was doing immediately. As soon as the needle went through my, my stuff, she said, I hated myself. I wanted to scream, please don't do this to me. I wanted to run away as I par far as I possibly could, but it was too late. For the next four and a half hours, I felt my baby thrash around violently while he was being choked, poisoned, burned, and suffocated to death. I was not told that any of this was going to happen. Let me show you what God said in the Bible about an unborn child. There are just several examples, and I'm going to tell you what the Holy Spirit said. If you believe the Bible, 
If you believe the Bible, then God's Word settles every issue. We are not going into a big long study this morning over when life begins. And, and I know I've heard, I know all the different views about abortion. I know that. I won't have even time to go into them. Maybe even tonight I might can mention some of them. But first turn to Genesis chapter 25. Genesis chapter 25. I know that Adam wasn't a living soul until he breathed breath of life. Adam was not in his mother's womb. He was a created pile of dust laying there. There's a difference between Adam and an unborn baby. I also know the Scripture in Leviticus about two men are fighting in the woman's fruit department. I know all those Scriptures, and those are controversial issues that we will not take time to go into this morning. All I simply want to do is to show you that God says that inside of a woman, when she is pregnant, God says is more than a blob of tissue or a mass or a wart or a growth. That's all I'm going to show you right quickly this morning before I let you go home. I'm not even going to preach on it. I'm just going to show it to you as you go. Genesis 25 and look at verse number 22. Well, this woman was pregnant. She had twins that she was going to give birth to. This is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit writes the book of Genesis and said when Rebecca conceived, verse 22, and the children struggle together within her. Now the Holy Ghost called them two things in her womb children. It did not call them a mass. It did not call them a wart. It called them two children. Now, the abortionists say, oh, you're not right by using that word child. You're trying to place emphasis on, on playing on with emotion. They've just accused the Holy Ghost of not being right. The Holy Spirit said they were children. All right? That settles it. You say, well, I know somebody don't believe they're children. They're wrong. The Holy Spirit said it was children. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm just going to give you these, then I'm going to let you go. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter number 1. And let me show you what God said about Jeremiah the prophet while he was in his mother's womb. He wasn't waiting until he was born and became a person. He wasn't waiting until he was born to become a human. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. God told Jeremiah, Before I formed thee in the belly, God forms you in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, while Jeremiah was still in his mother's womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Did you read that? Did you read that God said, that God told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, while you were in your mother's womb, I ordained you to be a prophet to be the night. God looked down and he saw that little boy in his mother's womb and he said, that's the boy right there. He's the man I'm going to use to preach and be a prophet. God does not call warts to preach. God does not ordain blobs of tissues to be prophet. God does not sanctify an unwanted mass of, of, uh, of material to be a man of God. God only calls men of God to be prophets. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke to number 1. Look at uh, here. And this lady was pregnant. She was the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her name was Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth got pregnant, God told her, He said, You're going to have a baby. That baby's going to be named uh, John. And um, Elizabeth was six months pregnant, you know, when Mary became uh, pregnant with the Lord Jesus Christ. And Elizabeth already was six months pregnant. Mary comes walking in one day, says, Guess what? An angel appeared to me, and I'm going to bring the Son of God into the world. I'm expecting child by the Holy Ghost. Notice what happened. Uh, Luke chapter number 1, verse 41. Luke chapter number 1, verse 41. This is the Holy Ghost speaking. 
And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, everybody listening? The babe, the, that word babe, B-A-B-E, is Old Testament, or Old English, I should say, word baby, baby, baby. The Holy Ghost said the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she said, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, verse 42. Whence is this, verse 43, that the mother of my Lord should come to me, for lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe, that's our word for baby, babe and baby is the same word, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. What about that? There's a little wart taking a shouting spell because he heard that Jesus was coming to this world. Hey, brother, there is no other case in the Bible or documented history that anybody's liver jumped around when they got good news from heaven. There is no documented case in history where anybody's gorder jumped up and down when good news came from heaven. There is no documented case in history, out of or in the Bible, where anybody had a, uh, a birthmark or a wart or anything go like that when they heard good news from heaven. But when good news from heaven came, it supernaturally went into the womb of this baby in his mother's womb. And John says, Wow! Hallelujah, Mama! I'll be there in three months! He'll be here in nine months. I'm going to preach six months before he gets here and tell him to get ready. Jesus is coming. And the Holy Ghost called that a baby. Now, what it is when a girl goes to have an abortion on her body, it is a baby. It is ripped apart by the abortionist tools or poisoned by salt and they tear its arms and legs off while it tries to scream in water and squishes its head and drags it out piece by piece. That is the real truth. I hate to have to be the one to say it, but that's the truth. And as we close this morning, they're going to get us a song. I'm going to show you three things that, that I learned from this issue. Number one, it shows we're in the last days. The Bible said in the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves. And buddy, if we ain't there, I don't want to be tied down with no kid. I want... The truth is, people want to live like married people, but do not want to accept the responsibilities of married people. If you're going to fool around out here and have sex and sleep with each other, then you're going to have to accept re adult responsibilities. And if you're not ready to accept adult responsibilities, then wait till you grow up a little bit, kitty, before you get out here and play with fire. Number two, it shows our society has abandoned the Bible and is hopelessly lost to try to figure out its own problems. We're in a mess. Number three, it shows that people know no limits to how far down they'll go unless God helps them. I want you to stand with your heads bowed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. This has been an unusual service. We've never had a service quite just like we've had this morning. I believe God spoke to some hearts here this morning. I've seen people wiping tears. I want to ask you a question this morning. If you know somebody here this morning needs prayer, you might want to just slip out of your seat, come down here and get down on your knees. So I'm going to go down there and I'm going to pray for them this morning. If you know somebody here this morning that needs the Lord, you might be the one that can help them to get out with the Lord this morning. There may be someone here this morning that you've never been saved. You've never been saved. Just like a doctor or a lady does not want that baby to be born, the devil don't want you to be born again. 
Born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. You were born the first time. Aren't you glad your mom didn't have an abortion? You were born the first time. I bet all these people out protesting, saying they have the right to choose. I bet they are glad their mama didn't have one. I bet Shirley MacLaine or Jane Fonda. I bet Jane Fonda's glad her mom didn't have an abortion, ain't you? How about you, young ladies, this morning, young men? You say, well, Brother Danny, I couldn't go to the altar. I could not go to that altar. Because all you showed and said there this morning, people think I was pregnant. People think I... Hey, it don't matter what people think. If you've got something you need to settle between you and God this morning, we've already got some in the altar this morning. If you've got something you need to settle between you and God, it doesn't matter what it is. It's none of nobody's business. If you've got something you need to settle... Between you and God, I'm going to invite you to get out of your seat, walk down here to this altar. If you're a lady, there'll be some of you ladies here to pray. Just come on right now. Come on, just get out of your seat. Come right now. Come on, while we wait, we're going to pray. Just get out of your seat and come. That's right. Us need to come. Others, we've got some come. Others need to come. Others need to come. You've been hit with the hard facts this morning. If you need to move, just come on right now. Just slip out of your seat and come. Come on right now. Come on right now. Just get your seat and come. We're going to pray. We'll sing a couple of verses and we're going to let you go. You need to come? Come right now. Just slip out of your seat and come. There'll be somebody come pray with you if you'll come. Christian praying. Heavenly Father, do what ought to be done here this morning. Thank you for this glorious time we've had. And Lord, we know some of it's been glory and some of it's been gory. God, I implore that you just take the truths that's been presented here this morning. Drive them home to the hearts of every person. And dear Lord, I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost of God would move in here this morning during this invitation. Do what ought to be done in every heart and life. 